Assalamu alaikum and very good evening and welcome to another episode of Ion Business. Uh, today we would like to discuss about the Tempion curfew and the uh, licensed restaurant that are closed uh, for Scotland, Glasgow and the central area and what effect it will have in terms of England in the coming announcement that the government will be making tomorrow and what difficulties the business in whole will face, especially our Bangladeshi community businesses. Um, today I have two guests here. I have Mr. Mitu Chowdhury from the BCA Secretary General and then I have Tuvaj Jalamir Secretary General BBCA. Very good evening gentlemen and welcome to the program. Good evening to you. Very good evening. Thank you for inviting. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, as you know and obviously the, the hard times we are going through is in this pandemic okay everything is changing on a daily basis on a weekly basis okay the, the, the Tempion curfew that we have going on within our business industry. You both are a well-known face in our community. You work within these industries of these small businesses that we Bangladeshis and small uh, businessmen run uh, within the community. Especially the restaurant sector, the takeaway sector. Obviously the 10 p.m. closures, okay? The 10 p.m. closures, how would they affect in terms of our businesses? Has it really impacted what the government is saying is it will stop the virus multiplying. Do you think that has really, really been, if I, if I go to Mitubai, uh, what do, do you think that is something that... Thank you so much. Look, I've been running my restaurant for 28 years and I've never seen anything like this. Do you want more death? Do you want to go more hospital admission? Do you want to see more people in the IC? No, we don't run. So on that case, we are very lucky. We are still running our business until 10 o'clock. Scotland is the fastest infection rate than any other parts of the UK. In Scotland, Gotoshaftaf, since Friday, they shut down completely. You cannot go and visit somebody's house, only because spreading so quickly. To stop this, they have to take this action. And I think for our safeguard, for our lives, for our families, for our business, I think it's ideal to stop it, to spread the virus. So are, you, are you in favor of uh, the whole complete closure or are you in favor of the 10 o'clock, do you think that has? Uh, as I s understand, government is going to take three steps. Right? Tier one, tier two, tier three. What they're going to do, southeast, if you compare with the northeast and northwest and Scotland, southeast is much, much better. What they're going to do, southeast, they're going to keep it as it is. You can carry on as long as you maintain six people in one table. You can carry on, you can sell alcohol, you can run your business as long as you cover your face mask, as long as you wear it. If you go to Northeast, Liverpool, Midland, uh, Manchester, Newcastle, what they're gonna do, they're gonna say, okay, open the restaurant until six o'clock, but you cannot visit to somebody's house. You cannot get together because it spreads so quickly. If you go outside on the air, that's fine because it, you, you don't breathe and people don't inhale. So that's, that's what they're gonna do. In Manchester plus North, uh, Liverpool is very bad at the moment because 44% in 1,000. So what they're gonna do, they're gonna stop it completely from tomorrow. That's what I understand. Let's get to Vajal Bayin. Vajal Bayin, this 10 o'clock, um, we've spoken when, on, on one of our program that um, having everybody out at 10 o'clock, you know, it doesn't really improve the situation, but in, in terms of a lot of people, it actually getting everybody out together in the, on the street at the same time, using the public transport, using going on forward. But I mean, in terms of the 10 o'clock, it, it hasn't really, has it really helped um, the spread, containing well, the spread? Has it really uh, affected the business? So business, small businesses, the restaurant, and another thing is the, the pubs, they can carry on selling if they have a beer garden. So you are able to take a pint of beer and go to the beer garden and speak to six other people. Yeah, uh, well it's a very very important subject you touched on and you picked up today. I think first thing is we have to make it clear. One thing we have to understand, I'm so sorry I have to disagree with my learned panelist here. 
you cannot mix chalk and cheese. You know, our restaurant is in a control environment. From the, the minute they walk in, we have a guideline, including one party in, one party out, or one way in, one way out. Hand sanitization, compulsory temper, temper, uh, temperature check, NHS track and trace, compulsory mask to the table. So only time they take the mask out is when they're on the table and when they're having their food and drink. So we are in a control environment. Now, for me, government, to impose closure on 10 o'clock for the control environment, that is not, uh, I'm not agreeing with that, like my learned uh, uh, panelist here. Because you are asking me to close at 10 o'clock, and who is uh, paying for the damage? Because some member of ours, BBCA's members, are uh, losing out big time. For example, uh, maybe, you know, in suburb or, uh, but when you go centrally, for example, Birmingham, Manchester City, uh, Newcastle, Liverpool, there, to be honest with you, some places, the first table arrives at nine o'clock because that's the lifestyle they're used to it. But my point is, they are losing out big time. So who is supporting their losses? That's my problem with the government because I think the government got it completely wrong. They should close down the places which are uncontrolled, i.e. the pubs, the clubs, where they stand and eat, stand and have a pint of drink, a uh, pint of beers or drink, and where they fail to... Where, they, fail where to, they're mixing fail, with other people. Fail to maintain the social distancing. So for me, it's a wrong decision, and I think government, look, I'm going to say this, nobody likes losing life. I have to agree with my panelists here. Nobody wants to see uh, uh, us put, getting into more trouble. But you cannot mix chalk and cheese. We, as a restaurateur, following the guidelines I've said earlier, and uh, we are in the control environment. Hence, I believe strongly the government got this wrong. We should have been let open as we are operating and the pubs and the clubs i believe they should be uh, shut down and like you said it's doing more damage by closing at 10 o'clock for example some people who are due to travel 11 o'clock some people who are due to travel 12 o'clock now what is happening everybody's traveling closing down 10 o'clock traveling at the same time particularly in central london the public transport the, it becomes Overwe chaotic. Over overwhelmed at the it same sort of 10 o'clock becomes another rush hour. Time. So they're not maintaining social distancing, and I believe uh, they're doing more damage. In addition to that, a weekend, we know youngsters, they come, they leave 10 o'clock, they go on house party. Where's the social distancing? That's why I believe, I believe, I hope I'm not wrong, the testing is going up the roof. However, the one positive thing is, the uh, mortality rate is really good and low. But then again, one life we cannot accept losing. One, li one life is one too many. Absolutely. Um, government said viable business of a viable job where there is the scheme for, 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 for the help of the scheme for the job um, and salaries. Yeah. But calling a, a, a lockdown on certain sectors of businesses that job won't be viable, that, don't just, that job doesn't exist. So for them to work 10 hours in, instead of their 30 hours a week or whatever they, that they're employed to do, how do you think that is going to work out? How the employees uh, will... I'm going back a little bit. Since June, infection rate is higher than any other time. Mm. As you know, we are four weeks behind France, six weeks behind Spain. In France, Paris is locked down. Spain, Madrid is completely locked down. Brussels, every single coffee shop, beer hall, everything is shut down just to control the virus. Government pumping 62 billion pounds to get out the recession out of it because people need to work. People need money to look after their families. Now, 
the people, the owner of the business, if he cannot run the business, if he shuts down, what yeah. they're going to do, government, the people who was working or who is working for him, they're going to pay two-thirds of his salary just to look after you, just to pay your gas, electric, water, and your food bill. Government cannot pay everything. They cannot pay money to every single people. They have to get the money out of you and me and everybody. Where is the money coming from? 1.2 trillion pound government debt at the moment. They keep borrowing. They are not printing the money. They are borrowing money from World Bank, maybe no other organization. That money has to be paid. Who is paying? You and me and him. Now, if the business, if they don't support the business, if they don't control the virus, people cannot go anywhere. As you, uh, my honorable friend said, look, 10 o'clock, if you shut down 10 o'clock, you put more pressure on you know, all the youngsters. Yeah. What a youngster does, they go to pub. They go to 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, then a few minutes later, they go to different club, different pub. They mix. They don't know what they're doing because they had a drink. They lose their common sense. So they keep touching and hugging. Because of that, the virus rate is a scientific evidence. Virus rate goes sky high. That's what government's saying. Try to bring them indoor. Drink indoor, but don't drink indoor. Don't mix with the other people. That's why. But do you think, do you think the restaurant should have been outclassed? The restaurant should not be included within the pub and the club where drinking, more drinking is gathered, more gathering. Where the restaurant, you go, you go and you sit down and you eat, you have a bottle of, bottle of wine or a glass of wine or a bottle, you know, glass of uh, absolutely beer. Absolutely brilliant. I 100 percent agree with you because the restaurant people go and eat. They enjoy. They don't mix with other people. They sit at the table. Mm. They don't work around. If they open until 11, it would have been ideal, would have been fantastic. Take away until 11, no, no problem, because he's coming and collecting and going there, home. There's not number of people there. It would have been ideal, because there is no scientific evidence if people stay from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock at the table, it doesn't pass anybody, because he's not mixing with other people. It would have been ideal. I agree in that point, yes. Finally, you're agreeing that they got it wrong. Because the restaurant is a controllable environment, closing, making us, making us uh, in the same, same level, same, same as, category, same as level as the clubs, bars was completely wrong. This is my voice. Our president Shalim Chowdhury straight away wrote to the government, saying that you got this wrong. You are mixing chalk and cheese. You are mixing people where they're having these. A control uh, following the guideline and in a control environment and you're asking them to close particularly at the weekend we know the catering uh, business are very busy generally Friday and Saturday we all know most that. of the income is generated on the exactly. weekend exactly those busy places or generally even not not very busy places they have two setting policies at weekend so imposing us to close at 10 o'clock and losing the revenue, I think that was the wrong thing to do. I cannot agree. Now, I'm, I'm glad uh, Mitubha no, is I accepting the fact that you. accepting the fact that it's I didn't agree point. with you. What no. I'm saying, compared with the question, if they extend from 10 to 11, would have been ideal. Because where I live, southeast of London, over there, you don't see too many people after 11 or 12 o'clock walking around but drinking in a pub. But if you go to north, that's where it's the problem. Because people go to nightclub or pub or anywhere, and they stay until 2 o'clock in the morning. The, the, that the, is the their problem. Li their lifestyle of operating is later than That's house. the problem. Yes. Because of that, and the virus rate, if you see up north, is really worse. Any other area would notice the really worse area. They heat it very badly. Even Andy Baram, the mayor of Manchester, he I, said the I, restriction has been lifted too early. I, can't, I, I cannot, I'm not going to defend that at all. But my point is imposing us to close. Who is liable for the damage? Who is liable for the losses? The government the, the, should do. The, the, like, for example, uh, Amir Bai, the Scotland has closed from since 10th. Now, the government has already announced 40 million pound package to help those businesses who are going to be affected. Go. Now, now, 
For me, Mitubai, it's not about me, me, me. It's about wider community. And we as BBCA represent everyone from Dockland to Scotland. So we have to take care and we, are, we believe we are the vo voice of our industry. If we don't raise these voice and concern, that would be wrong representation. So I'm saying again, the government got this wrong. We are a controlled environment and they shouldn't have mixed us and put us in the playing field as the bars and the clubs. They should have allowed, let, the, uh, let the restaurant industry allow it to carry on, maybe in a smaller capacity. Maybe they should have said, OK, you have a 100-seater 100, 100 capacity. Yeah. Maybe you can have 50 people per hour, or 20, 30 people per hour, and stagger it on it's and a, let it carry on. It's a good point. Again, I'm going to say that. Government, look, there is no doubt the government has helped us on one-year rate free. 10k or 25k grants, the uh, bounce back loan, job uh, retention scheme, the VAT uh, reduction of 5% now extended until 31st of March. There is no doubt the government has helped us. Firstly, with the social distancing, and I'm going minimum brother here, minimum every restaurant has lost one third of the sitting. That was first we were battered there. <coughs> Secondly, if we, are, uh, if we have been imposed to close early, that's the final nail in the coffin. I don't mind if they feel, and I, I have to disagree with my learned uh, colleague here, that there is no scientific result that closing 10 o'clock will reduce the COVID uh, infection uh, spread, I beg your pardon. They just literally, the government literally followed the Belgium uh, what they, what Sweden. Belgium, Sweden, Sweden and Belgium did. Now they did it on summertime, where, where you it's know the dark, dark gets the days are longer. Days are longer. So people hang about outside this and that. And we're doing it in winter. In an uncontrolled environment. But we are approaching winter. I think, like I said before, by letting everyone close at ten o'clock, and when you see the high road, and there, of course, they're a bit tipsy. You know, everybody have a especially weekend they have a drink whether it's 10 o'clock or 8 o'clock they do because that's what the socializing about so when they leave at the same time particularly in, in urban area like central london and uh, 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 outer london people uses transport or traffic uh, sorry underground tube they forget because everyone is leaving at the same time and is causing a rush hour so everybody uh, most people forget about social distancing and in my view it's causing more damage uh, than good sorry i'm not agree with him look we lost 42375 people yesterday 43000 lives 500 and 544000 people infected so far right Every single infection rate, if we carry on like this, and if the government doesn't take any action, 50,000 people will be affected every day. If you multiply a month, can you imagine how many thousand and thousand people will be affected? We would not go to hospital, we would not go to GP, we would not go anywhere. We could not because it would be out of order. Health service would be completely out of order. Who's gonna control, who's gonna see? You need to look up. You need someone to look so after you. We, you need to control the we virus. We need to control the virus yeah. spreading. And but another again, thing is, we need it's to not. It's not only London. You need to think about the whole nation, the whole country. Look, in London, we're talking about the underground TV station, the bus, everything. Too many people. It's still infection rate is not as bad as not. Well, then, then in my it's, view, you need to control do, the virus. Do, you need to the major. Right yeah. major. Should it, be, should, it, should it have been more stronger in up north, where in Glasgow and Edinburgh and so on? Should it have been more uh, stronger? Yeah, that's lockdown? what the government doing it. Area basis but depends. Saying that, yes. where I go back to Tuvajula by saying, yes, if it is stronger, who is going to pay for the recursion of these losses of small okay, businesses? Okay, look. But Andy Burnham said yeah. that, that, that the people, the, the, the employees, the workforce should actually get 80%. Yes of the furlough that they did get. Yes, yes. He has written, he has meeting with, with a lot of the leaders up in North, and yes. he said that if, it, if the government is not paying 80%, yeah. that they should either pay 100% or 80%. If not, he's taking that 
to a legal yes. proceeding. Yeah. Yes. So even if, 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 if it's a stronger sort of uh, lockdown, he's requesting the government, he's threatening the government yeah. to take legal action to make sure what they the Fajal Bai is saying is to make sure that the business is surviving, the employees are paid, and they're getting their food look, on the table. Look, the, since 24th of March, when the national lockdown started, government paid every single business, if you want to, 50,000 pound bounce back loan. And government gave the bank a guarantee. If he doesn't pay, who you will pay? You have to give the loan if somebody apply for it. They gave 25,000 local council grant. They freeze business rate completely. On top, you've got all the other facilities. As well as if you don't work, if you sit down and watch television, still you get 80% of your wages. You're getting full wages, 20% is your tax. So you're paying the 20% tax, you're getting 80% as you used to get. They cannot look after you every day, every week, every month, every year. Where's the money coming from? On top, BCA worked so hard with other organizations to reduce the VAT from 20% oh. to 5%. Yes. We take credit because government looked after the small businesses, hospitality sector, and it helped us so much. And I can say since Second World War, British government did not help as much as present government did, the business people, the people of the country. So I think we are grateful to the government, the support, the help, and the advice we are getting at the moment. So I think they're doing absolutely brilliant. As you said, if you lose the job, government gonna pay two thirds of your wages. Today, tomorrow, when everything goes back to normal, they have to pay that money back. If you are 40% bracket, you have to pay double tax. So end of the day, you will suffer, he will suffer, somebody will suffer. But the question is, if the business don't survive, you know, how do you keep it afloat? If, if your, your members uh, from, from both of your uh, institution, if they don't survive, how are they gonna be able to pay for it? So how do they, if they are in a lockdown, and if they're told by the, the, the government, if they're told by the local uh, uh, council, you need to shut down from tomorrow. Mm. So for the next four weeks, you're shutting down. If they don't, if they have a rent to pay, yes, the rate is frozen. But if they are, if they are on, on a leasehold property and they have a rent, the landlord are not going to freeze their rent or say... Uh, absolutely. That's where the difficulty is. That's where imposing at 10 o'clock is causing many of our members uh, 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 losses. And hence, we need to speak out. Yes, uh, look, some places are okay. They, they're not affected. I'm not going to deny that. But you've got to look at it from Scotland to Dockland, Dockland to Scotland. You've got to look at it as a wider uh, issue. Yes, we know the spread uh, of this disease comes from droplets and contacts, whereas our restaurants are in control environment. We have been given a specific guideline. We are not pubs and nightclubs or clubs. We work on a guideline. We've got a fine, if you don't follow, up to 10,000 pounds. Now, what they've done, they made their life easy. The local council should have visited those places, and I'm, I'm going to be a harsh on here, harsh here, those places who pick do not the, follow pick out the, the guideline and pick up the bad crops and find them. I don't disagree with that. But the problem is imposing closing the man who's following, the business people who's following the guideline, he's been penalized for no reason. So and it's like causing more damage than good. If you look at the statistic, there is no scientific reason why they have closed down 10 o'clock. We're, sh we're shortly going to go on a break, yeah. but before we go on a break, uh, we have a couple of callers. Let's Please. take a call. Very good evening, caller. Hello. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Go ahead, you're speaking live. Thank you. Sorry, yes, I just uh, want to make one point. It's uh, interesting to see both panel members there, Safa Dubai and uh, um, Dubai. Uh, just to one point I want to make, uh, uh, make one point. The vast reduction was purely for COVID 19. There's no other symptoms. I know many of us have campaigned and, you know, alongside, but the issue of the VAT was purely for COVID. There's no other reason. 
Thank you very much for your call, uh, caller. Thank you. Uh, uh, gentlemen, before we carry on our discussion, let's go on a, we're going on a commercial break. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Um, gentlemen, as we were discussing earlier on, we, we, we both of you and uh, discuss on the topics of some agreeing, some disagree. Quick question on the, on the thing um, of uh, furlough and the new job return to the scheme. Which do you think I mean, it's a confusing one. Do you, do you think the government should have just stayed to the furlough that they were on rather than going to the job return scheme that they have? And which uh, one? Uh, one uh, Mitubai, if uh, I yeah, interrupt, sure. before we go to you, both of you gentlemen, there's a, a few more callers. Let's take this oh, call and sure. we'll come back to you. Uh, very good evening, caller. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Very good evening. Um, welcome to the program. Please uh, come up with your uh, question. Thank you. Hi, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shah Lalun Amin, and this is a message for Tafat Julbai. Go ahead. We're all listening. Thank you. Okay. My question is, I, I see a lot of disparity between the BBCA and the BCA <laughs> in your message in regards to the 10 p.m. curfew. Uh, my, uh, as a business owner, I've got two restaurants, and I'm suffering a lot because of this curfew. And I'm actually, um, I'm actually shocked to see um, uh, the uh, Mitubai say that the 10 o'clock curfew is good for business. How can this be good when it's actually killing our business? That's my question. Okay. Uh, can I answer thank, the question? Thank, thank you very much for, for your fantastic question. We'll get our panel to uh, uh, say a little bit more on, on uh, the question that you have raised. I'm not saying it's better. What I'm saying is better than national lockdown. At least we are operating. At least we are running the business. At least we are paying the gas, electric water. At least we are taking the business running as normal. So, Normally, maximum restaurant they shut at 11 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock would have been ideal, without any doubt. I've got five restaurants, we run five restaurants at a time, within five miles radius. We suffer. But what I'm saying is better than national lockdown. You, 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 what you're saying is you're agreeing to what the 10 p.m. is better than national, national lockdown. lockdown. That's lockdown what I'm where saying. You'll have to fully uh, stop operation. Yes. yes. Uh, 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 this this brother Shah Lalon, I believe, uh, uh, raised a very important question. This is what I was talking about. There are people outside. We have to look at the people, wider community, wider business people. Like I said before, from Dockland to Scotland, there are more damage done by closing at 10 p.m. Again, I'm going to go. This person, I'm sure, is running a viable business with COVID-19 secure experience, giving experience to his customer. He's the one who's most probably following all the guidelines. And he made and his restaurant, lost, lost. he's made his restaurant, Amir Bhai, uh, a, a, a COVID secure environment. Now, he's been forced to close 10 o'clock. He's lost a sitting, most probably, most probably on Saturday, which most probably be 60, 70 covers. Who is liable to pay for that imposement? This is the fight we have to fight. I'm not saying government, look, government has helped us. I'm not denying. And no life is worth anything. I agree to all that. But somebody has to be responsible and the government must look into it very seriously. Let's take another caller. Thank We've got you. another caller online. Very good evening, caller. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Anand Sirbadul Islam. I'm calling from Southwest, London. Go ahead, brother. We, 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 we can hear you speak. Well, Aslam, my question is to Mitubai regarding about the, the 10 o'clock curve to you. Mitubai, I just want to ask you to tell you something that we are following every single guideline the government has put on us, on the restaurant. When customer walks in, we ask them to put mask on, sanitize their hands, sure. scan the QR system, we check the temperature. Yes. Right. We are following every single guideline. Even when we service, when we serve the customer, we have to wear mask, gloves. You know, take every single action that sure. we could. Sure. That that which is uh, needed. Now, I went to Mitu Bai's website and I saw that he's got 12,000 restaurants that he uh, controls. Does, does that mean he's controlling my restaurant as well? No, it's not if controlling. He's controlling 
that every single thing that we are, the government has put on, we are doing it. But what is it doing it for us? The customers are getting pressured, we are getting pressured, and it's really frustrating us because by 9.45, we have to put the bill on the table. Correct. And it's, we are losing business. So this 10 o'clock curving is not helping us at all. It's not helping us at all because it's, we are losing customers day by day, and it's really frustrating us. So what is it doing about it? Thank uh, you. Thank you very much for your no, fantastic no, call. I mean, I mean, the restaurants are being controlled fully, but it's the pub and the club are not being controlled. But the restaurants are being fully controlled by the government guidelines. We are doing everything that we are supposed to do. Thank you for your call, call a fantastic question from Mitubai. So do we. We are yes. losing customers as well. We are losing business as well. That's why what the British MPs on, in the parliament on mm. Wednesday, they are going to have a vote on 10 p.m. curfew. What lots of con 60 conservative MPs saying 10 o'clock is too short. We need to extend from 10 to 11 o'clock, including Keir Starmer, opposition leader. And what they're saying, they're going to have a vote in the parliament on Wednesday. Whether government agreed or not, if they lose that vote, then they will extend from 10 to 11. I don't support 10 o'clock. So do you I'm think saying, the government is going to do another U-turn on another I uh, think, thing? I think what they're going to do, they have to look after the business. They have to look after the small businessmen. As he said, we do everything is possible to make sure our premises is safe, make sure customers are happy to dine in our restaurant, make sure they keep coming back to support us, to keep going our restaurant, to keep going our economy, so in that case, we have to respect government's rules and regulations. Of course, well, everybody because must of that, the law. They don't decide, they don't talk to us. They talk to the scientific advisor. They advise them, they put the law. We have to follow. What they're saying, 10 o'clock, lots of conservative MPs saying now, 10 o'clock is too short. It's not enough for the people to go out and have a dinner and get out of the restaurant by 10. So pub and the club must shut 10 o'clock, make sure the virus doesn't go, doesn't spread, doesn't go from one people to the other people because they go from one pub to other. You don't know who is carrying, who is passing to who. So what they're saying, they have to listen to government. That's conservative MP saying. And it's vote on Wednesday. We might get extension from Wednesday night uh, from 10 to 11. We might get 90% sure they will do it. And we are lobbying in using our influence to the MPs. My junior health minister is my constituency MP. I go and sit down with him, with her and with him. I've got three MPs within five miles radius. And I say, look, this is what we do. This is our livelihood. We look after small business people, 100,000 workers, 150,000 family involved as an Indian restaurant, because we represent Indian restaurant. 12,000 we don't control, we represent. We represent those 12,000. We talk 12, behalf of them. But this I, is what I we have, want. I have to disagree with you uh, here, yeah. Mitubai. I'm so sorry. With all due respect to you, you don't represent 12,000. Now, what we say. Within that 12,000, I have a restaurant myself. Now, of course. Let me finish, yeah. please. Yeah. I didn't interrupt it's you. Umbrella organization. I did not yeah. interrupt you. So I have, say, 500 members within that 12,000 uh, restaurant. They're not your members. You might have the 11 and a half, but you don't represent 12,000. Please accept that. And no, I get the benefit. That's what I'm saying. You get the benefit. That's what I'm saying. People no. get the benefit. I think, I think you are misleading people. No, no, no. What I'm saying is. saying. No, no. Allow me to finish. Sure, then sure, you can answer. Sure. No problem at all. I would not interrupt you. So what you by, like, can I pause you for one second? We have a few more callers. Let's take this few call. More call. <laughs> Very good evening, caller. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, very good evening, Kola. You're live on air. Uh, alaikum salam. Go ahead. Uh, I want to ask you a question, man. Um, why, why people in jewelry store for wedding, so many people, uh, but uh, we're not, no wedding allowed. Why people? People <laughs> eating in a uh, shopping. Yeah. Why? Yeah, Only 50 people. Why is the government doing this to us, man? <laughs> It's a good point, yeah, actually. You know? Fantastic. Thank you, know you very much for your call. We will discuss I'll be honest and serious here. About it. I don't know what to do, man. Well, it's talking <laughs> let, about let me the just finish. Of, of Sorry, from wedding. From wedding. Well, I, let's you finish off from me, before. You know? Yes. Now, why I say you are misleading is, you know, you are claiming 12,000. In your website, I think one of the brother, the name was Badrul Islam, said, 
you are representing 12,000 restauranters. You're not representing mine. Who gave you the mandate to represent me? So I think it's misleading, number one. Number two, this brother uh, asked, actually, maybe he asked in a funny way, with all due respect to him, but it's a very important question he'd raised. In weddings, we are not allowed, but when you go to supermarkets, and when you see the things there, I am shocked. And the governments are not doing anything, and they're imposing closure on us, where we, the small businesses, are trying to follow every guide uh, they're given to us in a controlled environment, and imposing us to close, but not being responsible for the losses. That's where I cannot agree. And from the first day when they imposed, we disagreed with the government. And we've written to the government. Our president, Selim Chaudhry, has written to the government that this is not going to go down well. It's going to, uh, 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 a lot of business will, be get, uh, will get caught up in the middle because of closing early. Now, if, he, if the government didn't impose, then we don't claim the government for anything. But for the if responsibility. they impose us to close and they get it wrong, they need to do a U-turn. That's our demand. Thank you. So, so, so there, there isn't, there isn't um, thing for the business to be getting it through one and a half thousand, two and a half thousand, three and a half thousand in terms of their rateable value if there is a local lockdown. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's enough for the business? Mr. Uh, to be honest, at the moment, whatever help we get, it helps. We appreciate any help from the government. Sometimes... Is it enough? The problem is, depend what kind of business you are running, what size of the business you are running. If you got a small restaurant, if you got a small taker, if you get limited money, somehow you can manage. But if you got, say, you said 70, 80 cover restaurant, you've got 20 staff, you've got gas, electric, water, telephone, rent, rate, wages, it's not enough. But government cannot look after everybody. We have to understand. The situation we are in is once in 100 years. It's unprecedented. There is nothing we can do. We expect government but to help us as much as possibly can to look after our business, to look after our staff. Look, to I'm not, uh, uh, in here. What do buy? Me to buy. Uh, when me to buy is saying the, government, the government is helping us. The government is, has the responsibility of looking after its citizens. Absolutely. Where it's ordered its citizen or its businessmen and women to close up shop where they will be paying a rent rate where the rate is frozen. But if they say, okay, we are giving you £1,500 at the end of two weeks or uh, a month, which that doesn't cover I'm anything. Not I, I'm not going to deny the government has been helping the catering industry nice and fair and well. However, the government needs these small businesses. They are not doing it just for the love, because these small businesses bring millions pounds of uh, millions and millions of revenue to the treasury uh, coffin every month for example restaurant particularly i'll give you a good example whether you make a loss or profit end of the day end of the year you have to keep paying the vat vat 20 percent goes straight to the coffin of number 11 treasury so they get a lot of revenue you know now I'll tell you what, I'll give you some stats. I'm not going to deny the government has spent, you know, for, on furlough they spent 30.4 billion pounds. On test and trace, 10 billion pounds. On PPE, they spent 15 billion. Public and businesses, 12 billion. These are big numbers. I'm not saying that the government hasn't. But the government, when they make a decision, this is where my problem is, they impose something on us and they don't understand the trickle effect is going to happen, that's where I have the problem. And that's where my job is to raise and show our concern of our members, that they are losing out, and if they lose out, they won't be, in, uh, they won't be there in the business. If they're not going to be in the business, I'll tell you what, after October, the real test, real figures will come on the furlough, the job losses, you will see what percentage of jobless people are in this country. And it will have a mammoth effect. It will have a trickle effect. People will be, can be in trouble. Now, saving these small businesses 
are one thing to do. That's all what we are asking. Yes, they have helped us. Yes, we don't want to lose life. But at the same time, if you are imposing us to close at your order, and there is no scientific reason why they ask us to close, and they have mixed us on the same playing field as the pubs and the clubs, where we are in a controlled environment, following the guideline, that's where I cannot agree with the government. Thank you. I'd like to add something. Government takes decision based on scientific evidence. On Thursday, Boris Johnson announced the major. Day before, Chris Waite, independent scientific advisor to government, whoever the government, whoever party government, they said, we need to save our lives. That important. You need to save your citizens. But there is no scientific That's reason. Why. What is that? There is no one scientific reason. There is no one scientific reason that the imposing 10 o'clock is has going to help no. or not. No. So, so this is since in, argument since, in since that imposing sense. 10 o'clock, the, the, uh, the test is been going up and up. So, in the, but, but the, 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 they, the, in, we need the most independent scientific advisor yeah. for the government has said we need a stronger yes. lockdown. He didn't say yeah. he didn't say time. No, that's correct. Yes, we so, need a stronger lockdown. Yes. The yes. stronger lockdown should have been imposed soon as possible. Yes, exactly. where the government announces we will do a closure or impose a lockdown yeah. on a Monday and Tuesday, where the weekend everybody goes yeah. out and have a last yeah. party, <laughs> yeah. has a drink on the government, and but can you imagine? In Scotland, they stop from 6 to 6. 6 o'clock is shut down completely. Yeah. If we have that problem, it would have been a disaster. At least in that base, at least we are carrying on, running our business, looking after. And on Wednesday, we might get, they might reverse their decision. Another thing is, look, we need a vaccine. In America, 60,000 people, sorry, 20,000 people on 80 different sites in the area they tested. Yeah, but who? Still, we didn't get satisfactory result because it's too much side effect. Yeah. Right? Because of there is no vaccine, they have to do something. They have to control the disease, make sure it doesn't spread to everyone. Absolutely. Which, which again, so far, so, I, mean, I agree to say, it. You know, you I agree know, to it. But who is, saying, who is saying that we will not head towards like the lockdown of Scotland? But here, Mituba, you have to understand no, this. I do. No, 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 no. Scotland has been given forty billion uh, million pound budget to help those lockdown, like, like when the national lockdown. And my point again is, if you are imposing to close someone, you have to cover the person's or the businessman's loss. And I'm going to fight for that, whether Mituba agrees or not. That is my job because I represent my members from up and down the country, not me, me, me. But Bindu Bhai, I mean, what what Jal Bhai is khoira as a atika se, bondo khoro, lockdown khoro, even if it is central London lockdown khoro, but my members, the general public, the, the, the businessmen are women of all, they need to be reinvested. I agree that. What you're saying is, yes, government is the other, it's the other, it's the other. Limited, because they are resources. Look, England, I just it's a one thing, island. Island. It's, it's not a big country, it's a small island. Five million people in Scotland, they can afford to pay everybody. But in England, in the UK, they cannot afford to pay everybody. We sit down and watch and they pay money. It doesn't work like this. Because, as you said, we are heading for bad recession. No, Our I'm economy gonna, would be that. unprecedented. It would be, I mean, it will be really bad, bad recession. We need to get back our economy going. We have to run our business. We have to keep going. That's true, without any General, doubt. We're coming towards the end of the program, but my question is, okay, do you think the furlough and the rob job detention uh, scheme that's coming in, do you think that is enough? So no. What you'll buy? no. Do you think that uh, is enough? I, I, and, I don't and, think and going... The, the, the 1,500, the 2,000 and the 3,000 per calculation of your rates, that if there is a lockdown in a certain area, this is what the government will pay you. Is, is that a month that they... They pay 2,000. No. 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 Is it enough? No, I don't think so. Uh, look, government is going to... And they're changing and chopping every day. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not here to defend the government or attack, but I'm here to pinpoint where they go wrong. It's not about attacking the government or it's not about defending the government, no. The, the, the suggestion about the two, three thousand pounds, 
on furlough, new furlough scheme is not going to work because some people's expense is huge. For example, in central London, a minimum a shop's rent is a thousand pound you a week. So getting 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 <laughs> two thousand pounds is what is it? It's not even a tip a of the iceberg for them. You know, so how can they survive? Now, what will happen if they impose again with this uh, closure? In my in my view, these businesses will go down under very quick and fast, and it will have a disastrous effect on the economy on the long run, because to us uh, to get us on the back on the feet is going to take long time. I'm not saying we are a hard working uh, working nation. Britain has seen, uh, maybe not as worse as this, but they have seen wars, they have seen uh, a lot of disasters, and we picked ourselves, so they know the way. Now, I, I want to I touch on one more thing. Only two countries, including uh, that includes Britain, is allowed to print money. Yes, some next generation or somebody has to pay for it, but what is important, current situation, to survive or get, over. or get over it, to pay or just sleep over it and get dead and buried. I rest my case. I think Farlow scheme was absolutely brilliant because whatever you do, wherever you work, whatever the wages you are getting, you are getting exactly the, the same. The new money. one is not. I think that one they should carry. Yes. On. Do you know why? So it doesn't affect you, doesn't affect me, doesn't affect anybody. An economy will boom. Because economy has to keep going. That's the most important. We are the sixth largest economy in the world. But if you compare with Brazil, America, India, if you compare with that, pretend don't print money. Do you know why? Otherwise, it would be like a Zimbabwe. Inflation rate would be sky high. The bread we buy, milk we buy, one pound, 10 pence, one pound, 20. That would be five pound. So we are worse off. So we are better off as it is, as long as government help the people who doesn't have the job, who doesn't, doesn't work or who can get the job so people can carry on their normal life help the business and and, and people and the workforce exactly. sail out this yeah. uh, keep it strong stay, yes. steady and there stabilize are, the they, economy they have That's important. to help these small businesses i'm not only saying about the restaurant and caterers other small businesses because each shop employs on an average eight to ten uh, people that's eight to ten people's bread and butter you know family so we have to help these small businesses. The furlough, they have to rethink, not 2,000 and 1,000 businesses, not going to work because it won't even cover some of their rent, let alone the overheads. So I think the government will rethink. I think the government should help the small businesses. I strongly believe, and we at BBCA will continue to lobby for the small businesses from Dockland to Scotland. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you on this show. Um, viewers, thank you for inviting. Thank you very much for watching uh, tonight's program. Uh, do join us next week, 10 o'clock live. But until then, do look after yourself and each other. Very good evening.